had this the experience of being conscious of being conscious. Being conscious of being conscious. Right, how many have had that experience? In one of the videos, I think it was the Osir, the Amen video, uh, I gave the mindfulness meditation where you can take your mind to a place where you stream out all things of this reality and then have the experience of being conscious of your true self. And I'm at a place here where I'm sitting on top of the earth and there's a beautiful breeze going and the sun is beaming down and I'm right next to the water. So it's like all four elements are converging upon the spot that I find myself in. And I just tell you, it's such an aid to your meditation. You know, sitting here on my mindfulness meditation, and you know, well, just to get through it, get to it. You know, the mindfulness meditation is where you basically ignore the thoughts. You find you discover yourself to be separate from your thoughts. You you kind of um, you confirm this understanding that the thoughts that you have are not you. You know, the impressions that come to you are not you. And it's possible to just let them go on their own business. Sometimes the thoughts that you have are thoughts streaming in from other people. It depends on your level of receptivity, your psychicism. Sometimes the, the thoughts that you have are aspects of your being coming through, expressing themselves, but they're not you. The various aspects that you have, you know, your ability to be, you know, loving, right? Your ability to inflict your will, you know, your, uh, you know, your ability to, uh, you know, use your intellect. These things are aspects of your being, but at the totality, they are not you. And they have expression, you know, they're at different states of wellness. And, you know, this whole journey is about correcting those things to have them all go in one direction. Whoa. Y'all see that? <laughs> yeah, sometimes they like to hang out with a brother. What can I say? I don't know if y'all can see that. All right, man, you got to chill out. I'm doing a video. But, uh, yeah, chill out. Okay. So these are aspects of you, but they're not you. And, you know, you're on a spiritual journey. You're doing something to elevate your understanding of your oneness. You know, then it's imperative that you... incorporate a mindfulness meditation you know, that you incorporate in your practice the time where you just ignore your thoughts the thoughts that stream in you know sometimes it's not you know when you first start to try and practice this it's not that easy because we're so used to dwelling in our thoughts as our thoughts you know this is why, this is how you overcome certain things that you need to overcome in your life. Just by realizing that the thoughts that you're having about them are not you. And where you can dwell in you, that's where you can correct all that's wayward about you, about your being, right? Those aspects that need correction. You know, the thoughts that come that want you to be depressed, you know? You know, the dwellings on this situation or that situation. If you can't separate yourself from those things, then you're doomed. You know, you're doomed to exist within that thing. As you, oh, I feel so bad. I feel so hurt or whatever it may be. You know, the real trick is to be able to react in real time to the more 
uh, angry expression that aren't you. You know, those angry thoughts that come. You know, if somebody comes up and, you know, says something goofy, or, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, that reaction that you have, you know. And you get better at it if you dwell in this place where you understand that that exists, that self exists separately from those emotions. You get better at being able to be in the moment of the offense or whatever it is that might have gotten your person heated. And, you know, you can just flow, you know, because that emotion is not you. That reaction is not the essence of what you are, and you have the ability to do something else. You know, that's where we experience God within our being, you know. That's when we experience the oneness, the wholeness, somewhere in that stillness. There's that presence, you know, being present over the thought, you know. You don't have to get caught up in the thoughts. Lustful thoughts come. You can get all in it. You can be like, oh, yeah, whoa. You know, they even come with bodily reactions. You'd be like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially if you're dealing with, you know, semen retention, things like that, you know, abstinence. You know what I mean? It could be easy to get all into that lust. So that's why if you're on a spiritual mission, then it's necessary to cultivate mindfulness. Cultivate the ability to ignore the emotions, to ignore the impulses, to ignore those things that are low on the tree within you. The tree is so important. It's so important to understand the tree within the being. It makes it easier to identify what's to be corrected. To identify you know, where you're strong and where you're weak, you know what aspects you have in abundance and what aspects you need to work on. You know, the tree is God. <laughs> yeah, the tree of life. Yeah, you know, there was a reason why they told you that that tree was evil, because it's the thing that could help you fix you, and they didn't want you to be fixed. That's the whole thing. You know, we, yeah, man, some of y'all are stubborn, you know, but I mean, I don't know, that's just like, you know, they didn't want you to be you, you know, so they told you this is forbidden, this tree of life or the tree of knowledge or whatever. There's nothing forbidden about these things that God put here for you, you know, as God exists and dwells within you. But people, who wanted control over you, told you that you shouldn't be into that. Some of them told you you shouldn't be into meditation. Oh, you invite some familiar spirits or whatever. That was criminal of them to do. That was the worst thing that someone could have did to you. And they're dealing with some type of karma for that because that was bad. That Because meditation is the answer. Going within is the answer. Someone told you that divination was taboo. Worst thing they could have did to you. Because where you're not proficient in meditation, divination exists to let you know what is what. You know, without divination, then you can't do a reading on that individual that's telling you those ill things. You know, that priest who told you that divination was wrong was trying to hide something about him. He was trying to hide his intention to go touch on your little boy or something like that. <laughs> you know? But yeah, you know? My eyes are clear. Blind and tear. Blind and tear that my person is not caught up in the mental trappings that come with dessert. You know? You know, and sometimes that makes things a little bit harder for your road when you don't conform to what everybody else is doing. You know, oh, you can't be over here in this group because, you know, we, 
this religion over here and we can't have you up in here. Uh, well, okay, no problem. I need to go a different route, but yeah. And sometimes this road can be, I guess, lonely, but it's supposed to be. If you can't be alone, then what good are you? <laughs> if you can't be alone, then you're not expressing your true self because when you do your mindfulness meditation, that's what you'll find, is that you exist alone. You know? The mark of a spiritual being is someone who can exist without the stimulation that others present. Someone who can exist by themselves and be chill, be cool, be not bored, you know? You can go to places in your mental that occupy you in a substantial way. And you don't need the conversation of somebody else, the laughing or whatever it may be. These are all so external to what you are. You know, and if you can't exist by yourself, you got work to do, you know? Maybe lifetimes you'll get that together. You know, you know, you're extroverted. You know, it's no problem to be extroverted, but you should also be able to be introverted as well. To be extroverted and only exist within that and think that that's just the end all be all, that's not whole. To be introverted and that be the all of you is not you're not being whole because you got to come out of here at times you're on the planet <laughs> you're on the external plane so it's necessary to be extroverted but it's also necessary to not forget your core that which is you yourself which is inside yeah yeah don't forget who you are many of us already forgot remember who you are that's why Osset is the memory. Osset was the one in the story who went through her devotion to Osir, which is God. She went and gathered the pieces of his body and mummified them. She remembered. The ancient Egyptians was bad, y'all. <laughs> the ancient Egyptians was bad because, you know, that truth they were able to present in the way that we can get it. You know, there's nothing so complicated about understanding that you resurrect the God within through your devotion to the God within. Through being devoted is how you put the pieces back together. You know, so that feminine aspect of our set is necessary for you to ever see your set within. Yeah. Yeah, man. A lot more to come.